dearest gentle watchers and subscribers welcome back like i said previously it's bridgerton season and this topic is going to be an interesting one but as you know me already <laughs> without further ado let's get into it so before the drop of Bridgerton season three, I made a video on how I saw Eloise's and Penelope's friendship dynamic developing and what I personally predicted for the future. And I was said that I was excited to see how Eloise's friendship with Cressida would come to be. I expected a dynamic where Eloise would try and fit in into Cressida's inner circle and that would ultimately fail and then she would go back to Penelope. And boy oh boy, was I wrong. And I'm actually really happy about that. You see, for a long time, Cressida, especially in the books, irritated me to no end. So the fact that Eloise ended up befriending her and the fact that Cressida had bullied Penelope practically all of her life made me so upset for Penelope. And don't get me wrong, I'm still upset for Penelope. But if there's anything these last episodes have shown me, I think it's actually a good thing that Eloise and Penelope are not friends for now. But let me explain why. However, if you don't know who I am, Hi, my name is Deborah, student singer, songwriter, and everything else in between. Welcome back to my channel, where I talk about my favorite TV shows, movies, and books. And today, we're getting back into Bridgerton. And if you're not already, please do subscribe. It helps your girl out. But without further ado, let's get into it. The reason I think this friendship separation is quite a good thing, it is because a, it has pushed them both out of their comfort zones. Penelope and Eloise have been very, very close for a certain amount of time. And don't get me wrong, I think this friendship breakup is of course sad for both women and especially for Penelope, considering the fact that she doesn't really have anybody else around her to call her a friend or anyone to really depend on. And just like the rest of us, if you've gone through a friendship breakup, which the majority of us have, it is painful and lonely to separate from a friend that you thought perhaps would be your friend for an extremely long amount of time, or you consider that friend your best friend for life. Like like Penelope and Eloise did. I mean, they plan to become spinsters. Sometimes I do personally feel that friendship breakups can sometimes be more heartbreaking than an actual relationship breakup because of the love that you share between each other. It's very deep. And yet, on the other hand, I do think that if Penelope and Eloise were still been best friends, it would have not forced Penelope, first of all, to change her look and go for something new. I know that does work hand in hand with the fact that she didn't want to live with her sisters anymore and her mother. She was desperate to try something new and try and attract a husband. But I do think that if she was still friends with Eloise, she would have had the comfort of going to the Bridgerton home to escape her family rather than being stuck in the situation and seeing the situation for what it truly was and finally planning to make an escape by getting married. This is not to say that Eloise stopped Penelope from doing things, but I do think the separation between Penelope and Eloise made Penelope realize what she truly wanted in life and the fact that she did not want to live in her mother's house any longer. And sometimes with Eloise and hers dynamic because they decided to be spinsters together, if the both of them had remained pr friends, there is or there would have been a very strong possibility that Eloise would have talked her out or deferred her from seeking marriage. This is further supported by one of the episodes in season three where Colin and Eloise were in the same carriage and Colin is telling Eloise that Penelope has an intention to marry this season and she's looking for a husband. Immediately Eloise scoffs because she says that's not Penelope. But you see the truth is this is actually Penelope. Penelope has always wanted to be married. She's always wanted to be in love and have a match. But because she was with Eloise and she felt the most comfortable with Eloise and their family, she decided to go along with Eloise's plan to become a spinster because she saw no other way or possibility for her since she didn't really have many suitors knocking at her door at the time. Eloise was kind of her safety net. In the world where she wasn't emotionally supported by her mother or by her sisters, by removing that safety net, she has no choice but to go find something of her own, which in this situation would eventually lead to her finding a partner that hopefully will not only monetarily support her, but also emotionally support her and give her the love that she's deserved and that she's been deprived of since. But if both of them were still friends, there is a very big possibility that that might not have happened as effectively. Now, I know you might be thinking that in the books, this certainly does happen because Eloise and Penelope were still friends at the time during the books. However, this show has doubled down on the personal development that Penelope goes through. Unlike in the books, Penelope does remain extremely shy and still stutters a lot, but in the show, because she now has a separation from Eloise, she's now also forced to be more forthcoming and more insured in her personality. 
something that wouldn't have happened without Colin's lessons and giving her guidance. If they had followed the original book timeline, there might not have been enough time for that because Eloise would have demanded Penelope's time and therefore she wouldn't have as much time to spend with Colin, not only in them building their relationship, but also them using that opportunity to build her boldness, her character, and to practice speaking to other people and mingling with other people and going through it. On the flip side, I also think this is great for Eloise. See, Eloise for a long time has sort of held her nose high to the ladies of society deeming them as extremely simple and not giving any care to their interests just because their interests are not the same as her own. I understand that she's a feminist and I do appreciate that and I, I do love that for this era of course, but sometimes she tends to oversimplify other women within the ton. Rather than seeing them as women who have no choice and are just trying to survive in this world that they've been given, she sees them as one dimensional characters, which is arguably what men do themselves in the ton as well. So by forcing herself to get out of her safety net as well with Penelope, she could get to know people that she normally wouldn't have met if she was in that same friendship and she was in that same comfort zone with Penelope. I actually think that this separation has forced her to mature a little bit. Now I'm not saying that her maturity has come about because she's just wearing more dresses and conforming more and being more ladylike. I am saying that her maturity is coming through her ability to understand some of her mistakes and also get along with other people without judging them and also being able to, to develop her own personality. See, if she would have still been friends with Penelope, they would have stood off in the corner and watched other people and not have mingled with other groups. And she wouldn't have realized that her personality is actually quite entertaining to people, which arguably could be something that could be great for her development in the future. Also with her friendship with Cressida, I'm not a fan of Cressida myself, but I will say that one thing has become really apparent that I like how this show did. This show also exposed Eloise's habit of jumping into conclusions, which is what she also did with Penelope. And that was what deepened their fight in the first place. When Eloise believes that Cressida was the one who spilled Penelope's secret, she doesn't even give Cressida a moment to breathe and she immediately goes into conclusions and concludes for herself that, well, Cressida did it, which is one of Eloise's biggest flaws in her arguments. She jumps to conclusions a lot of the times and sort of makes up her own mind for other people without giving them the chance to fully explain or seeing things from their point of view. By having this argument with Cressida and being forced to tackle also her own shortcomings, with how she argues with people, this friendship has held up a mirror to her face to expose her behavior, just like how she has held up a mirror towards Cressida to expose Cressida's behavior as well. I do like this because as a result, she gets a taste of her own medicine. Reason number two, now Penelope can understand how it feels to be on the other side of Lady Whistledown. Now, this is not Penelope slander. I love Penelope and I see a lot of myself in her and a lot of her characteristics, even though I am not as shy. I completely understand her being an outcast in society and not being able to make friends as easily and coming from a family that's very emotionally neglectful and scapegoats her. I completely understand. However, this does not negate the fact that her column, Lady Whistledown, has destroyed other people's lives. And as much as I want to gaslight Girlboss Gatekeep for Penelope, the truth is I am glad that she was able to be on the other side of the coin to feel how Eloise felt when it came to her own reputation being publicly decimated in society. Now, first of all, it's important to note that Penelope's reputation has never been great in society. And this is also kind of partly her fault with how she would also shame herself in the columns. But I guess you could argue as well that that was necessary. Otherwise it would look suspicious. So I kind of leave that point B. However, However, Eloise was her close friend and also came from an equally high noble family and exposing her friend's personal life details like that in a moment where her friend was truly happy exploring a lovely relationship which he never really had and to see her best friend throw that in a column is truly heartbreaking just like how Penelope felt when her secret with Colin was exposed. Now she truly understands what it feels like to be on both sides of the equation. Not to say that she's ever had it easy, Eloise has never been mentioned in Lady Whistledown before, but I do feel like this situation has made her understand the damning effects of the words that she writes can truly have on people. I'm definitely very happy that Eloise apologized to Penelope and they had a few words, although I do completely understand why Eloise was still hesitant to continue any sort of friendship with her. You have to think of it from this point of view as well. Eloise is naturally a little bit more ignorant, but so are the majority of the Bridgertons, and somewhat aloof to her position and her status and her privilege in society. But at the same time, 
you can imagine from this point of view if this was your best friend that you guys literally had a pack together to spend your lives together and then you find out she's basically the xoxo gossip girl of your whole entire society and then you find out that she decided to use your personal details and publicize it to an unforgiving society that loves to scapegoat women and their scandals for their own personal amusement yeah you would probably be hesitant for a certain amount of time before you can trust that person or even become friends with that person again i know i certainly would so i'm happy that they're able to take time apart truly think and also just pursue different things away from one another. I also love the fact that Eloise could get a little bit out of her bubble of privilege and see how other people's lives are not as peachy keen as hers. The scene where Cressida's father, who, my God, I could go on about the horrible dynamics in her personal family for an hour. I was kind of glad that Eloise could see that her loving and supportive family is unfortunately something that is not very common. Not everyone has the privilege of having a loving mother like Lady Violet Bridgerton, who has her own faults, yes, but deeply cares about her children and is truly one of the most caring mothers in the whole entire show. Eloise can therefore see through Cressida that her life is truly privileged in so many ways, monetarily and emotionally as well. That she's lucky to have parents that were a love match and that were in love with one another and didn't try and emotionally manipulate one another. And also a mother that emphasizes their happiness rather than their usefulness for her own personal gain. I'm glad that she was also exposed to another side of life to see what women go through and that their hunt for men and the need to get married is not just because of society's pressure, but also some women are desperately trying to escape their families and financial ruin. All in all, I think these new friendship dynamics truly surprised me in a very pleasant way and I'm happy to see that both of the girls are growing in their own way. Now, of course, I certainly do expect a reunion eventually, but even with that reunion, I personally feel like their friendship will be renewed in a different way and maybe they can also have some respect for one another's new developed personalities and their changes that they've experienced in life. But anyways, that's just my opinion. Let me know how you guys feel down in the comments below. I'm very excited to hear your opinions. That's all for me for now and I'll see you guys in my next video. Please don't forget to subscribe because some of y'all ain't subscribed. <laughs> anyways, I'll see you guys in my next video. Okay, bye.